In the last video, we learned that the Jacobian matrix defines the relationship between joint velocities and end effector velocities in this way. Now, we know that each Q is a joint variable, so that means that the J matrix needs to have a number of columns equal to the number of joints in the manipulator. And since there are six things in the vector on the left, that means that the J matrix needs to have exactly six rows, always. So, for example, suppose that we are trying to find the Jacobian matrix for a manipulator with three joints, two revolute and one prismatic, like our SCARA manipulator. The equation would look like this. Now, we need to find what goes in each of those six rows and three columns of the Jacobian matrix. Now, the way we do this is by using a table that tells us how to fill in each column. First, I'm going to show you what the table looks like, and then we'll see how to use the table. The table looks like this. Notice that there are two rows in the table. The top row is for determining the linear parts of the end effector velocity, and the second row is for finding the rotational parts of the velocity. There are also two columns. The first column we'll use any time there's a prismatic joint, and the second column we'll use any time there's a revolute joint. Let's learn how to use this table by using an example. For the first example, let's suppose that the manipulator has all prismatic joints like this. Now, we know that our Jacobian matrix will look like this, with three D's in place of the Q's, because we only have three prismatic joints. To find what goes in each of the Jacobian matrix places, we use the table. We'll start with the first column. The first column of the Jacobian matrix is for the first joint of our manipulator, and that first joint is prismatic. So we get the things in the prismatic part of the table. The I in the table refers to which joint we are looking at. This is joint one, so I is equal to one here. We can fill in the first column of the table like this. Now, the second column of the Jacobian matrix is for the second joint, joint two. So I equals two. We get the stuff from the prismatic part of the table again, because this joint is also prismatic. And we fill it in like this. Finally, we do the third column of the Jacobian matrix. The third joint is also prismatic, so we get the stuff from the prismatic part of the table again. Here, I equals three, because this is the third joint. So we fill in the third column like this. Now, we're not quite done yet, because we've left some variables in this table that we can fill in. I bet you recognize the R matrix notation. We learned all about this in Robotics 1. R00 means the rotation from frame 0 to frame 0. R01 means the rotation from frame 0 to frame 1. And R02 means the rotation from frame 0 to frame 2. To finish this Jacobian matrix, we need to find these rotation matrices and fill them in. So let's look back at our kinematic diagram and put frames on it. We already learned how to do this, so I won't go through that again here. Okay, so R00 means the rotation from frame 0 to frame 0. That one's easy, because there can't be any rotation from a frame to itself. So R00 will always be the identity matrix, which means no rotation. In our Jacobian matrix, we need to multiply this matrix times the vector 0, 0, 1, which is actually the exact same thing as just taking the third column. So I'm going to take the third column of R00 and fill it into the Jacobian matrix like this. Next, I need to go find R01. 
We've also done this a bunch of times in the past, so I won't go through how to get this again. R01 is this. Now, since multiplying this matrix by the vector 001 is the same as just pulling out the third column, I'm just going to take the third column and plug it into the Jacobian matrix like this. Lastly, I need to find R02. Think back to robotics 1, and you'll remember that we can do this by multiplying R02 is equal to R01 times R12. I've already found R01, so now I just need R12. R12 is this. Now I multiply R01 times R12 to get R02 as this. I pull out the third column because I need to multiply this by the vector 001, and then I stick it into the Jacobian matrix. And this is the final Jacobian matrix. Before we move on to another example, let's think about what this matrix means and what we've learned about the velocities. Now, I can multiply through to get six equations. My six equations say x dot is equal to d2 dot, y dot is equal to negative d3 dot, z dot is equal to d1 dot, omega x equals 0, omega y equals 0, and omega z equals 0. Does this make sense? Let's look back at our kinematic diagram. The first equation we have here says that x dot is equal to d2 dot. According to our equations, the speed of the end effector in the x direction is equal to the speed of the second joint. Does that make sense? It does, because the second joint is pointing entirely in the x direction, and it always is, no matter what happens with the different joints. It's true that the velocity of the end effector in the x0 direction is completely controlled entirely only by the second joint. Our second equation says that y dot is equal to negative d3 dot. Does that make sense? The y direction is up, and the d3 direction is pointing down. Our equation is telling us that the velocity of the end effector in the y direction is equal to the opposite of the speed of the third joint. And that's true here. The velocity of the end effector in the y direction is completely controlled only by joint 3 and no other joints. Our third equation says that z dot is equal to d1 dot. Does that make sense? It does, because z is pointing in this direction, and the first joint is moving in that same direction. So the speed of the end effector in the z direction is completely controlled only by the first joint. And when the first joint is moving in the positive direction, the velocity of the end effector in the z direction is also positive. What about these other three equations that say that omega x is 0, omega y is 0, and omega z is 0? These equations are telling us that no matter what we do with our three joints, we can't get the end effector to rotate around x, y, or z. Is that true? It is, because in our manipulator, we only have prismatic joints. There's no way for us to get our end effector to rotate. For example, imagine we had a gripper attached to this end effector. Could we get the gripper to point in a different direction? No matter what we do with these three joints, the gripper will always be pointed in the same direction. There's no way to rotate the gripper. So these three equations seem to match our kinematic diagram also. Let's do another example. This time, let's do an example with two revolute joints, like this. Here, our Jacobian matrix will still have six rows, because the Jacobian matrix always has six rows. But it will only have two columns, because we only have two joints here. 
To find the Jacobian, we'll start by going to the table and getting the part that is for a revolute joint, because our first joint is revolute. Now, I here is 1, because this is the first joint that we're working on. But n is going to be 2, because there are a total of 2 joints. So we fill in the first column as r00 times the vector 001 crossed with the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 2 minus the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 0. And then down here we put r00 times the vector 001. That will be the first column of our Jacobian matrix. For the second column, we'll have to use the revolute part of the table again, because our second joint is also revolute. So we'll fill in the second column like this. R01, since this is the second joint, i is now equal to 2, times the vector 001 crossed with d02, minus d01. In the bottom part of this column, we'll put r01 times 001. Now, let's go back and start to fill in the parts of this table. r00 is easy. It's just the identity matrix, since there's never any rotation from frame 0 to itself. So we take the third column of this matrix, and this whole expression becomes the vector 001. Now, what about D02? How could we get that? Well, we know that if we have the homogeneous transformation matrix, the upper left-hand part is the rotation matrix, and the upper right-hand part is the displacement vector. We can find D02 by first finding H02, and then taking the upper right-hand part of that matrix. Since you already know how to find homogeneous transformation matrices, I'm not going to go over that again here. If you use the denovit hartenberg method or any other method to find the homogeneous transformation matrix from frame 0 to frame 2, you'll find that it is this. D02 is now the upper right hand corner, so I'll extract that part of the matrix to fill in here. D00 is easy, because the displacement from the center of a frame to itself is always 0. Now, I have to take the cross product of these two vectors. If you don't remember how to take a cross product, and you're watching this video on my website, robograck.com, there will be a link next to this video to help you remember how to take the cross product of two vectors. After you take the cross product, the result that you get is this. And we're done with this part of the table. Now, for the second part of the table, we have R00 times 001. R00 is the identity matrix, and so we take the third column of that and fill it in here. Next, let's do the second column of the Jacobian. R01 is this. I take the third column and fill it in. And D01 is this. I do the subtraction, and then I take the cross product of these two vectors and fill it in to my Jacobian matrix. For the bottom part, I take R01, and I take the third column and fill it in. So I'm done with the Jacobian matrix. Before we finish this video, let's take some time to think about what this Jacobian matrix means and check to see if we're correct. Multiplying this out gives us six equations as shown here. First, note that none of these velocities are zero all the time. We could make any one of these velocities become non-zero by moving either theta1 or theta2. But some of the velocities do depend entirely on only one of the two joints. For example, the speed at which the end effector rotates around the z0 axis is equal to theta1 dot. 
it doesn't depend at all on the speed of theta 2. Examining our kinematic diagram, we see that this is true. We can make the end effector rotate around z by moving theta 1, but we cannot make the end effector rotate around z0 by rotating theta 2. Theta 2 only makes the end effector rotate around the x or the y axes. In fact, by looking at our Jacobian matrix, we see that the speed of rotation of the end effector around the x and y axes depend only on the speed of joint 2, not the speed of joint 1. They depend on theta 2 dot, but they do not depend upon theta 1 dot. Also, the linear velocity of the end effector in the z direction depends only on theta 2 dot, not on theta 1 dot. And looking at our kinematic diagram, we can see that this is true. Moving theta 1 does not make the end effector rotate around the x-axis or the y-axis, nor does moving theta 1 allow the end effector to have velocity in the z direction. So it looks like this Jacobian matrix is probably correct. We can test this further by writing the code into our microcontroller and trying to control the end effector velocities by using the Jacobian matrices. We'll be doing that in the next section.